Hi folks, so you find me touching the start of the Pembrokeshire coast path. 186 miles or 300 kilometers and I believe the, the ascent is the equivalent of ascending Mount Everest. I'm hoping to do it in round about 12 days. I think it says between 12 and 14 days. But we shall see how we go on. I'm just gonna take it as it comes kind of thing. So let's have a quick look at the map and then we'll get started. So I'm here. And I believe it's seven miles to so around about here. So I guess I'll be trying to get around here somewhere. And as you can see, from here to here, wouldn't be such a stretch, but of course, we'd like more fun. And that's the distance we're doing. Yeah, following the coastal path. So the journey has started and I can see already where I'm heading to. So sort of in the middle of the picture there is Saunders Foot and then right at the end of the headland is Tenby. That's where I'm trying to get to this morning. I'm hoping I can possibly have breakfast in Tenby. So here's a piece of fun. A fish filled with plastic. It talks about, obviously, help us to turn the tide on plastic. Okay, we're going up to the top of that cliff face. Well, there's just a little path over here. I think there's going to be quite a few steps involved. So there you go, I like that. That's in the toilet block at the end of the beach. But meanwhile, as I said before, we're going up the steps here. Here's the sign we're following. And there's the national trail sign. So at the moment we're on good track because we're following what used to be the old railway tram line that was taking coal from a place called Stepperside, which is a mile or two back near from where we started and it was taken coal to Saunders foot and it just happens there's a map here quite a good uh, good old map so we we started down here and in fact you can see here this is the the tram line for the colliery and you can see marks here tunnels there's one there and one there Obviously, it would, in fact, there's another there as well. But yeah, it would have been going over to the quayside here. And apparently, it was shipped, the coal was shipped over to the continent. So you can imagine if you were the driver of that tram and what later became a railway, having this to contend with every day or morning whatever how often they used to do it better than being down the actual mine itself I like this sign cyclist dismount it looks actually pretty low 
In fact, it must be about six foot, I reckon. Whoa. Well, there we go, we can see Saunders foot. So what do you reckon folks? I'm here and the tide's out, so I might as well cut across to here rather than going around that way, I think. Yeah, good plan of action. The sand looks pretty firm. There you go, someone going for a swim at half seven in the morning. I don't think I'll be joining him. I need to get over to Sona's foot. There we go, some early sights of Tembe and the coloured houses. Can you see these? These are so that if there's any problems on the cliffs, you can provide a grid reference to the emergency services. Life's good when you know you're having a bacon butty and coffee. Breakfast on Tembe Harbour. Can't be bad. That's been quite a nice walk along the south sands of Tembe. Now we're going on the firing range. Apparently a couple of flagpoles up there, and there's no red flag on it, but it means we're not going to be shot at, hopefully. So we have Cody Island over there, inhabited by monks and tourists during the daytime. Right. No flag flying, so I think we're safe. I guess we'll soon find out if we're not. 
So I think these signs should be disallowed saying keep out military firing range. It should say if red flag flying keep out. They made me very nervous to say the least every time I pass one it says keep out. But yeah, I haven't heard any guns yet. Right. So in the distance you can see Lipstep Haven Caravan Park, which is right on the beach there. And I did stay once with my parents when I was but a child, a long, long time ago. Right, you need to get moving. What can I say? Not my idea of heaven, but I'm sure some people are very happy there. That's having a cup of coffee, listening to the waves. So it's the end of the day for me. I've walked about 15 miles and I'll give you a brief summary on the map that I've got to hand. And the pod behind me is not where I'm staying. I have arrived at the YHS Manor Bear and obviously they have these uh, pods and other pieces of glamping but of course I'm in my usual tent just hold on a minute just to prove it I wouldn't want you to uh, thinking I'm getting posh in my old age there you go with the tower dr towel drying as well and I've had my shower and, and all's good with the world. You can see another family tent over there. That one's quite interesting because it's the poles are uh, compressed air, I think. And then, like I say, uh, some other arrangements over there. Meanwhile, you can have a look at the map. So we started in Amroth. And the problem with Amroth is it's three miles away from the nearest train station. And I'll tell you about my journey in a little while, but for now, we carried on down this way. We uh, went through the tunnels to get to Saunders Foot and then headed over to Tembe, down the, what's called the South Beach. And you can see quite an extensive beach area and then we uh, took the risk of going across the danger area and not getting shot at. Then we got to Lipstead Haven and I'm just there now. So Manobear uh, YHA. And I think, it's funny, I've looked at two different sources. One says it's 14 miles and one says it's 17. I actually think it's about 15. So yeah, and I've started off fairly gently for me. So I've had to move inside my studio or my tent, um, mainly because it's getting too windy outside and a bit cool as well. Anyhow, I was saying the disaster of trying to get to the start. One of the problems you've got is that the start um, is basically in the middle of nowhere. Um, the nearest train station to Amroth is three miles from a place called Kilgetty and you basically have to walk down country roads to get there. Now my original plan, because I was at a beer festival at uh, Tiny Rebel in Newport, I thought well actually that would be reasonably um, useful to try and get to the start. Uh, however, Sod's Law train was cancelled in the afternoon the one I was going to get the later train I got got delayed and then when I was on it it actually got cancelled which meant we had to get off at some particular random station and catch a bus service it was all very strange and it meant I ended up I think it was like half past nine at night trying to walk these last three miles uh, last moment I managed to get a wild camping place in some random field but it was not a great start to obviously try and do what I wanted to do today 
So yeah, I think that's hence why I'm at the uh, YHA or part of the reason. I mean, it does fit in with a reasonable schedule. Uh, like I said before, I think it's 14 or 15 miles. So it's not a bad start. So if you're ever thinking of doing um, which way around is it? So south to north, then that's not, I mean, it's quite a good stop. I think it's a well time and just doing 15 miles to get started with. It's pretty good. Right, I'm going to go and get some uh, some food and possibly might have a cheeky pint maybe and uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. Left the youth hostel now, really enjoyed my stay, feel very refreshed, had a full breakfast, filled up on water, so I'm all good to go. I must say it was well worth the, uh, the money, £13 uh, less 10% discount for members so uh, like I said I think it's in an ideal spot if you do a start from where I started and um, doing a south to north transverse um yeah what can I say it was I really enjoyed my stay there but now I must concentrate on where I'm going and give some thought to that I probably want to do about 20 miles today and just see how I go on. Being fully rested, I think that should be pretty uh, reasonably easy to do. But we shall see. Right, less talking. Definitely more walking. Basically, I could go down there for an early morning swim, except it's not so early now. But yeah, shows you the uh, possibilities. So one interesting thing, I think, is the fact that the fairly certain that the Wales Coast Path is part of the International Appalachian Trail. Curious about this. Wow that is just so straight down. Such a cut. The slide saw has taken a slice out of the cliff. Potentially a good place for a bivvy. In fact, it looks like someone's had a little fire in there as well. You'd have a great view out of your window. So I could see the beach right over the far side there, so you can see the distance. I was walking along the headline and thought, oh, that's not too far away. And then once someone put this in the way, I need to walk around. Which made me curious, so I looked at the map. It's got the strange name of Swan Lake Bay. Why would it be called Swan Lake Bay? I kind of like Swan Lake Bay. Very quiet, serene, peaceful. Not a person in sight. And the sandstone cliffs are quite interesting too. So we're now approaching Freshwater Bay. I think it's a bit easier to guess why that might be called that particular name. You can see the big ships landing here to grab some fresh water, no doubt. 
course it's probably taken by the caravan park now. Anyhow, we're going across the bay and then onto the headland over there. So my guidebook says this is one of the nicest beaches on the whole of the Pembrokeshire path. I have to admit, the sand is pretty good. So somebody just asked me how far I'd walked this morning. I said I didn't know, but I know that I came from over there. So could I recognise the, the building and you can sort of see the flagpoles as well from the British Defence. Uh, man that's over there. Obviously, just across the way is Coldy Island. So yeah, quite some distance when you take it all the way, all the way around different bays. direction over towards Broadhaven. So this is Broadhaven, right on the far headland there, I can see with the naked eye a red flag, which means the MOD is firing today, which now means I've got to move inland, and it's quite a bit of a detour, so I'm going to go that way, and further inland, and around. I think by the time I get round to the other side, it's probably going to be towards the end of the day. But anyhow, the plus side is we go across some lily ponds, I believe. So this is a map, there's the lily ponds. This red line here is the Castle Martin Range Trail. So this is the way essentially to avoid the military defence, this firing range here, which you can't go in regardless whatever time of the year. Obviously, like I said, I did see a red flag, which meant I couldn't actually come into this part. So yeah, I've got to follow this, but what I do love, you won't see this very often. I mean, how about that for a trail marker? A tank. Right, follow the tank then. That's pretty dramatic. Do not touch any military debris. It may explode and kill you. And of course, the red flag is up, so we're going this way. Now I am quite enjoying the Castle Martin Firing Range Trail or whatever it's called or the way of the tank. They've cut a, they've sent the lawnmower down and you're just following this cut track all the time. It's also it's quite easy on the feet as well after the hard rock of the cliffs. So it's just a bit of a welcome change. However, I am amused by these that I keep seeing. So about every hundred yards or so, 
there's a sign facing I can't get around it anyhow facing whichever fence telling people not to come in which is a bit bizarre because obviously they're allowed on this bit and most of them I don't think anyone would try to get through some of these hedgerows and for what purpose yeah bit nuts but hey ho I could say I'm enjoying it Well, I saw it marked on the map actually, but it's probably been there a long time. Well, yeah, cold comfort. Strange name for the house. Apparently, in the distance, it's a spectator's viewing point. Range spectator area that way. Oh, very strange. So apparently this area provides an excellent opportunity to see military activity on the range. Look for troops, tanks and armoured vehicles and helicopters and listen for the practice shells. The other thing it's famous for is filming a scene from Harry Potter. Apparently, it's where Dobby laid to rest. The people make a homage to come here. Rest in peace, Dobby. And in fact, we notice a number of socks around. Dobby is a 3L. One down here. You were amazing in Harry Potter. A lot of people still love you. We love you Dobby. So folks, I've just managed to work out that I've done 25 miles today. Probably a little bit further than I really wanted to. But I think circumstances particularly pushed me. So the morning was really pleasant with going along the coastal path, seeing the various beaches that we did and the, the cliffs and things of that nature. In fact, nature itself was very kind to me in the morning. The big challenge and the reason that I kind of pushed the mileage was hitting the firing ranges. After it looked at the lily ponds, we had to divert and the diversion was greater than normal because they sh uh, shut two halves of the firing range. And so the diversion was a lot longer than probably under normal circumstances which was a bit of sod's law. So in the afternoon, all it was about was really pulling my head down and pushing as much as I could. And it wasn't too bad to begin with. There were some fields and they were fairly pleasant, but then it really gave way to, the only way I could make progress was getting on the road. Um, obviously I enjoyed having a look at the tanks and being on the tank way was certainly different. But yeah, it was great to finally get back here, back to nature, back on the coastal path for real. And this, I mean, this beach, I, I think this is one of my favorite beaches, this one. And it's just a big expanse of sand. And apparently they do lots of surfing here. And I can well imagine that. There's somebody over there fishing in the distance as well. 
got a great spot and um, I'll show you around. I need to be thinking about bedtime. Maybe I'll read some Harry Potter. That was certainly uh, unexpected. It's not morning. I just realised there's something I forgot to say. Um, yeah, tomorrow's going to be challenging. So I'm going to a place called Angle, which is kind of over that way. Um, so I'm, we've been heading west quite a bit today. Well, this is now moving um, probably more in a northerly direction to get to Angle. I think that's about eight miles away. But the problem is, after Angle, we've then got an old refinery, then an old power works, and then Pembroke Dock. We cross over the water and go to, I think it's called Milford Haven. All that part is going to be not great. Maybe a little bit of Pembroke won't be so bad. Now, the challenge is, will I be able to get far enough away from Milford Haven or will I there's a danger I might just make Milford Haven by the end of the day and even if I was getting close to that it's still a couple of miles to a place called Sandy Haven I think so I may end up having to stop in the in a town again and just find some B&B or hostel or whatever I think after that, from what I can see, it's then, we, we're then plain sailing. We're, we're on the coastal path um, and we're out into open country. And really the, the way I've done the course from south to north is that in the south is the kind of worst part. And then as we get towards the middle and onwards, um, it becomes more and more scenic and rugged and remote which is just how I like it. So on that note, I will show you where I'm camping for the night. Uh, but for me, for now, I'll see you in the morning. Good night.